All right, Doombots, uh, the last A, at least for right now, is Ant-Man. And Ant-Man has a huge history in Marvel. Uh, but since this is not Hank Pym or anyone else, we're going to talk about who it actually is, which is Scott Lang. Uh, Scott Lang is, I believe, the second person to use the Ant-Man outfit costume moniker uh and this is back when hank pym became the original yellow jacket for reasons probably ultron related um but the mcu honestly got most of the character right uh a former you know master's degree engineer who was convicted of a crime of, of theft uh, had to basically make some money for his daughter Cassie's congenital heart failure. So he was told by somebody that uh, there was this rich guy in New Jersey, Hank Pym, who had a bunch of stuff worth stealing. Turns out Hank Pym was watching the entire time to see if uh, he could possibly take over the Ant-Man mantle because Hank Pym's exposure to Pym particles had been causing some deterioration to not only his mental well-being, but his physical body as well. So, Scott Lang took over the moniker of Ant-Man for a pretty decent amount of time. I'd say from, like, the 70s to, like, maybe the early 90s. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. And, unfortunately, as, as rich of a history the character of Ant-Man has, one of the original Avengers, uh, responsible for creating Ultron, so few of that is actually under Scott Lang. It's more Hank Pym's build, but Hank Pym has his entire story, and it's very unlikely we're ever going to see Hank Pym in this game anyway. So, uh, as far as that's concerned, Scott Lang is the Ant-Man in this game. We're probably never going to see Hank Pym as a playable character in this game. We'll see. Uh, but for now, we can talk about the character, right? So, as you can see by my lack of investment, Everything you kind of need to know. The benefit of, of Ant-Man, he's a global tech controller character. Technically speaking, he is a good option for global and tech nodes, uh, as he has a very reasonable kit. But as far as how he scales compared to other options, it is very low. Uh, even on his team Pym Tech, which is, of course, required to unlock a legendary, that legendary is Jubilee, uh, he's not noticeably better than some of the other options. As a matter of fact, the entire Pimtech team is a little bit lackluster compared to some other teams in the game, even when they first came out. Uh, but uh, he's an option. Uh, he's a relatively inexpensive option as far as everything is concerned. That He doesn't cost much. His resources, his special resources, aren't resources that are particularly fought over by any major characters. Uh, he's just there uh and with this most recent rework he's gotten a little bit better than he was when he was released he has like i said a really good kit just none of the stats or value to back it up talking with his special this is the first step when you see a, a line of text like this i don't even want to bother but a lot of what his kit does benefits the pym tech team so if you see with the tier four he has a plus 10 percent chance to assist you know, assist now on hero ally turn, bringing it to 50%. 50-50. Uh, if he doesn't, Yellow Jacket gets it. So, it's 40-60? Or it could go to 50-50? Why? Who cares? 20% uh, chance to gain assist now on Pym Tech, uh, on Pym Tech ally turn. Oh, I'm sorry. Outside of it. S still, if you're not using him on the Pym Tech, it doesn't really make a difference. Um... The Dark Dimension on spawn, if this character has four or more Pimtech allies, apply Uh Nobody is using this entire team on Dark Dimension. They basically, are, even just in general, your best options for Dark Dimension always happen to be independent characters who work well together against that form than using any one particular team. The only exception, of course, is the Symbiotes, and that's mostly because all the city characters suck. Uh, but, yeah, not really a Tier 4 worth any time same thing goes with stomp look a little bit more damage Woo! come up the works this ability is actually pretty cool four uh 
back in a time when ability blocks weren't all over the place, a four energy ready on turn one ability block for two turns was absolutely insane, let alone the fact it can't be dodged or blocked. This attack was amazing. He was just very slow and he had horrible focus, so it almost never worked. Um, even now, with a tier four, getting an assist from Wasp doesn't make too much of a difference. Scrappy Fighter, though, pretty reasonable. Attack primary target and copy a positive effect from the target to self and clear the copied effect. If Wasp was an ally, she gets it too. There's never really an easy reason to tier four this. Just all in all, really cool kid on a character that just kind of falls a little bit by the wayside. Uh, never really called to be highly invested in. But as far as an option, not the worst option in the game. Not the worst global character, not the worst tech character, not the worst controller. Pretty decent on the board. Even on his team, he's probably one of the better characters, but there goes everything. Uh, as for his setup, since he and Yellow Jacket are kind of built to assist the Pym Tech team, Skirmisher works really well on him, considering every other person has a pretty reasonable chance of calling him to assist. Uh, so if they both have an assist, you'll get multiple double attacks, especially from a character that has Striker. But you can also justify Striker on him to, as you can see, I even have a note in there, just so you can like grab a second ability off of uh, whoever you hit. That's more situational. You have to make sure there's two abilities that you would copy and take. And I don't know if you know this, but you can't take Taunt off people. It's just not an ability you can take. Uh, on him anyway it doesn't say it but you can't uh but you can take everything else so it's up to you i like skirmisher but truly i don't like anything it's kind of a waste to put in anything into him to begin with as you can kind of see uh but the options are there as for stats it's really hard for me to evaluate his stats with such a low investment msf.gg does a great job of showing you the information that you never want to actually see um but that's pretty much where you want to stand on ant-man as far as how you're going to end up using him in the game, let's think about it. Uh, War, he and the Pimtech team, uh, they're reasonable on defense. On offense, there's no one team that the full Pimtech team is like great at beating. Like you know how Shadowlands can beat Marauders or uh, Skeletary can beat the Mercenaries. Not really many. Things like that for Pimtech. There are some teams that Pimtech can beat. Um, very rarely is it like a, this team is built specifically to, or you don't need a lot of investment like some of the other characters, like the X Factor team beating, uh, or X Force beating basically anybody. Uh, this team just kind of needs a lot of work to get going. On defense, you can make them a little bit more modular. You can start replacing some of the lesser characters like Wasp with Vision. Um, giving a little bit defense up. There's options, but none of them are great. And more of a while you're building up, this is kind of the thing you do uh, as you're building up really good war offense teams. You can kind of place this as more of a speed bump for your opponents than an actual team that's going to win. You never know. Uh, but they're not bad. They're just not particularly good. Uh, as for raids, they don't get any of their dark dimension values in raids. And there is a lane in Gamma that requires Pimtech. And even then, he's not very high up on the list of characters you would want on that uh, at all. Because it's Pimtech and Kree. And Pimtech and Wakandans. And there's pretty much two Kree or Wakandans that are better than him in any situation anyway. But the option is there. You wouldn't really use them for any global fights. You wouldn't use them for any tech nodes in Alpha or Beta. And we're not even going to talk about Doom Raid. If you're bringing Ant-Man... In the tech lane in Doom Raid, power to you, my friend, because you have way bigger Kuyons than I do. Uh, other than that, eh, I guess he's got some value in Dark Dimension, but you know, some people used him on the first run through DD4. I think that was more of a let's see if they're right, then we should do it. And I said some people used it on the first run, a lot of people didn't use it to complete it, so. Not really a high impact, plus DD4 tech gear is so scarce, and there's so many characters that need it in order for you to feel really good about succeeding that wasting on Ant-Man isn't up there. Uh, I don't know if I skipped the game mode. Oh yeah, Arena, no. So that's pretty much everything as far as ant Man's concerned. As a character, he's probably in the same kind of conversation as like Coulson. Uh, there's some value to them. You can use him, but you wouldn't go out of your way to. So he's a B-tier character. You know, you... You get him, you use him. Uh, he's like Sif on the Asgardians. We'll get there later, obviously. But 
you know, he doesn't do anything that you want him to do, and he doesn't really take advantage of all of the resources you'd have to put into him to make him good. But he does have a cool kit. He's a cool character, uh, and as you can tell from the links in the description below, if you want to know more about Ant Scott Lang Ant-Man, uh, by all means, you know, check him out. But as far as character in this game, kind of lackluster and not somebody to work on. But hey, you let me know if you accidentally pulled seven red stars on Ant-Man and now you're forced to work on him like my poor five red star Ant-Man is. Anyway, have a good night, guys. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangelian. I will catch you later.